The following presentation is brought to you through the paid memberships of NotaryStars.com, the only notary training platform and resource library with over 150 hours of training on every loan product under the sun. Together with our sister website, OnlineNotariesPublic.com, which focuses on notaries who are pioneering in remote online notary, we strive to give you a safe place to ask questions, get answers, gain confidence in your notary career, and achieve success without overfabricating the truths about our industry. If you would like to support us, please consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel, sharing this video with a colleague, or becoming a member and trusting us to help you achieve the level of success you desire. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to MGM Monday General Mentorship. If you're currently driving, please remember to remain off camera and in listen only mode. Your safety is important to us. If you're not driving, please remember to watch the chat for links to previous trainings and topics. Today is Monday, February 12th, 2024, and we hope all of you had a super Super Bowl Sunday or Taylor Swift Media Day. Haha. <laughs> no dig to Taylor. As you know, we always play some of her music to get you pumped up for these sessions too. My name is Beth Hathoot. I'm the lead instructor for Notary Stars. And I have with me tonight two awesome co-hosts, Mr. Ronnie Mitchell, the founder and co-owner. Oh, got a little feedback going on. The founder and co-owner of Notary Stars, Unlimited Ink Notary, and Online Notaries Public. Also, Mr. William Bumphrey, aka Mr. Bill, our expert remote online notary instructor. This public training session is held every Monday except for holidays, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard, 8 p.m. Eastern. And guys, it's all about you, the brilliant notary and signing agent community who are striving to achieve, maintain, and surpass signing agent excellence. Everybody's trying to get somewhere, and this is all about how we get there together. There is no doubt we are off and running in 2024, and we have to say that your brilliant questions every week during general mentorship have not only been amazing, but so many notaries have written to us throughout the country saying thank you, because those questions help them as well. And really, truly, that's what this is all about. This session works best if you can do two things. One, turn on your cameras interact with us and your colleagues. It's incredibly difficult to get up here and do all of this and we're talking to nothing but a static screen. So if we can see your faces, your smiles, your heads bobbing every now and again, it just makes it so much easier. And two, raise your hand, either ask a question or offer something you've learned to help someone else. All you have to do to virtually raise your hand is use the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen. If you can't find that, if you're on a PC, you can use your Alt plus the Y key, and that will raise and lower your hand like a toggle switch, right? Or if you're on Mac or Apple, Option plus Y will do the same thing. So there's a shortcut for you. See, we're always teaching you something. Okay, before we get started, we'd ask you, like to ask you to please consider following us on your preferred social media platform. We post a great deal of information about free training sessions, and we post short training nuggets as well. Those social media links are in the chat, and you can see them on the replays as well. I think think, Mr. Ronnie, that is all I have to say about that. Are you ready to kick off this meeting? Yeah, absolutely. Um, guys, I would like to ask you, and, and guys and dolls, I'd like to ask you to please turn on your cameras. It makes it so much easier when we can see your heads nodding or when we see question marks on your face. Um, I know that some of you may be cooking dinner. That's okay. As long as you are not naked and you are not running around your house, you are welcome to turn on that camera. We we don't care if you're eating or or cooking dinner or tucking your children in. We'd love to even talk to your children because they might grow up to be wonderful notaries one day. <laughs> um, so uh, I want to remind you guys that we'll have Thursday uh, a wonderful session with Abraham Zamora, the notary, uh, the notary entrepreneur. Uh, he has a podcast called Notary Business Talk. And 
currently the theme of that is called direct business and we all want direct business um that's going to be this thursday at 5 p.m the same link you used to log in today will of course send out a reminder um also i want to mention that we have brought in last month the top three electronic notary journals in the country and uh now we're bringing in the top three accounting softwares our next installment will be two Thursdays from now, February 22nd, which will, and please mark your calendar for both of these, uh, same time, that's going to be notary assist coming in. I'm going to actually kick this off with something that I want to bring up to the notary community that I think is really important. Um, one thing that we teach here at Notary Stars is the path of least resistance, okay? And when I'm teaching a class or when Beth's teaching a class, we teach you things that you may not have to do in your state, but if you learn to program them into your brain, when you ship documents back to another state, you actually won't run into any problems. You know, I see a, about 3,000 transactions a month running on Limited Ink Notary, and as of today, we have a notary that did not put comma notary public after their name, and then when it goes back in that county, it couldn't record because the notary didn't put that in their notarial certificate. So we teach you that at the training at Notary Stars. And if you're not at Notary Stars, take that as a nugget. When you write down your name, when you are filling out a notary certificate, it is your name as it appears on your commission, comma, Notary Public. And when you sign, it should be you, your signature, comma, Notary Public, because you're signing in that capacity. And if there are any you know fields under that that ask for your job title, that is Notary Public. So you want to make sure that you fill those out because you don't want to be that guy or girl that gets that kicked back and have to go back to a signer. In this particular instance, the notary was actually standing in a seminar to renew their commission. And, you know, we're like, I can't really leave to go back. And Travis said, well, I'm sorry, you're going to have to reschedule that because this, this is delaying a funding. So you don't want to put yourself in a position to have a correction that you could easily avoid by adding two seconds to your life when you're filling out your notarial certificates. Um, so that's just what I wanted to bring to the table tonight. Ms. Beth, are you ready sure. for some of the questions that, that have come up? Absolutely, I gotta unmute myself. <laughs> okay, this one's actually from you and I think it's a really great question to get out. And by the way, guys, while we're reading these questions that you wrote in previously, if you are here for the first time, you can virtually raise your hand and get into queue to ask questions. Um, but we're going to start reading the ones that you wrote in as well. So, um, Ms. Beth, this one's definitely for you. It says, when a signing service asks you to alter a mortgage document, sorry, we're getting a little bit of feedback from somewhere. Um, okay. Okay. When a signing service asks you to alter a mortgage document for the lender, is it wise to politely decline? A signing service asked me to strike through a signature line on a partial claim mortgage during a split signing. I used a strike through on the notarial certificate for the signer, not present, but refused to do the same on the mortgage signature line, as I felt that that clearly indicated who wasn't present uh, on the notarial certificate. So, Ms. Beth? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's kind of an unusual situation to happen, I will say. Um, typically, when we are doing any documents, our first mode of action is never to strike through a signature line. When you're doing a split signing, um, there's two types of split signings. One where the documents are shipped to the second notary and the second signer. Uh, and they're going to use that signature line. And then there's a collated uh, type of signing where you have two completely separate sets of documents. Each signer is signing their own set. When it gets back to title, they collate those signature pages together. Um, that's kind of unusual to have a split signing like that. We usually see that in commercial signings. But I'm going to say... <clears throat> My first reaction is uh, it's from a signing service. They're not like unlimited ink. <laughs> they sometimes are brand new signing services. They sometimes just don't know. I might question it, but hey, if they're telling me to do something, I'm going to make that notation somewhere very clearly, or I'm going to ask them to 
give me that direction in an email, something that's going to be evidence should that come back to me. And they say, oh, no, you shouldn't have done that. You're going to have to go back and get it re-signed. Okay, well, I questioned it, but David told me to do it. So here's here's my email where, <laughs> yeah, David, sorry. I'm just picking on you because you're closest to me, right? Um, David told me to do it. Here's, here's the email he sent me. At least cover your backside if you're in that position. I would never just flat out refuse to do something someone's asking me to do. Uh, I would question it if I thought it wasn't correct. Um, but in the end, they are your boss. They're your hiring company. So if that's what they want you to do, just make sure you protect yourself and um, and and get some evidence that someone else told you to do that. I hope that helps answer your question. Ronnie, you own a signing service. What do you say to that? I say always contact your assigned party and... You know, if you're asked to do something that you, first of all, you can never break the law and unlimited ink would never ask you to break the law. Um, if it's within the law and you can do it, just get it in writing because the title company might get mad at the signing service. Again, mm. a lot of signing services are not like unlimited ink. We have 25 employees behind the scenes working from 5 a.m. until 2 a.m. And those of you that have worked with us, on that side of the uh, of my companies know that you know we really care about the, the notaries working with us there may be signing services that are just owned by one person trying to create the facade of a large company get it in writing okay before you make those decisions and always 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 listen to your gut after you've listened to your secretary of state there you go Ms. Beth, we have one hand raised now, um, but I want to encourage people to get their hands up um, as well if you brought questions. We've got a bunch of great questions that you guys have sent in, but uh, can we take this one from Jacob that's got his hand up now? Absolutely, Jacob. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. We want to show everybody how easy this is and how painless it is. <laughs> oh, there Try again. All right, thank you. Um, and yes, go ahead, pick on me as the guinea pig. But anyway, <laughs> um, yes, so earlier, uh, Ronnie, you mentioned that when I'm filling out a notarial certificate, I need to sign as, for example, Jacob Emerson, Notary Public. Uh, usually here, at least in Texas, um, if you sign and it at least says Notary Public State of Texas under it, and it has my name on my seal, they usually are a okay with that. So what would what Front row, lost you, Jacob. Try one more time to unmute. Can you all hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of scream at y'all then. <laughs> Um, so earlier, Ronnie had mentioned that whenever I'm signing a notarial certificate, I need to sign it as, you know, for example, Jacob Emerson Notary Public. This is in the loan packages that I've done. If it says Notary Public State of Texas, at least on the signature line, if I just sign it and, and then seal it, it has my name on my seal and it has my signature there in the capacity in which I'm signing. Isn't that pretty sufficient? I mean, except in, I know in Florida, you've got to physically print your name in other states, but otherwise. So, so are you in Florida, Jacob? Texas. No, Texas. Texas. Okay. So what he was specifically re referring to initially is the verbiage in the certificate said, on this date, I, Jacob Emerson, um, or blank line, where you're supposed to put Jacob Emerson and Jacob's title, this notary only put Jacob Emerson and did not put their title. That was the missing piece. So on this date, I blank, underneath it says print your name and title. They printed their name and not their title. That effectively is missing um, an element in the certificate that was requested by the signing party. So we know sometimes there are there's more information requested on a certificate that, than what might be required by our state. But if you leave it blank, they're going to kick it back. They have the right to choose 
the elements. Um, we're going to have to leave California out of this for a minute with their jurats because California has prescribed warnings for their jurats, which don't apply here. But it's the same thing as if they ask you for your commission expiration date and you leave that line blank because you think it's in your stamp, it'll be fine. They will kick it back. They will use the incomplete certificate regulation to kick it back. So anytime they ask you for info, as long as it's lawful for you to provide it or fill it in on that certificate, you need to do that. So um, Ronnie takes it a step further and he says, when you sign your name, you are to put common notary public because that's the capacity you're signing in. And you guys should all know that more than just notaries can do notarizations and their title of notary public, our title may not be theirs. They may be a um, embassy officer. They may be a Sergeant major in the air force. They may be a circuit court judge. So they don't use the title of notary public. That's not their public office that they hold. So that's why it's important to have notary public in your certificates. Does that help, Jacob? Okay. <laughs> and Ms. Beth, just to comment on that, there is a lot of attorneys out there that hold notary stamps and also sign real estate documents. And especially when I'm in working on a transaction where it, it can be ambiguous if they think I'm an attorney and not a signing agent. I like to just clarify for people that I am working as a notary, not an attorney. And putting that after my name makes me feel a lot more comfortable on those documents that if they ever came back and said, well, he explained the documents to me and I can say, well, in my capacity as a notary loan signing agent, it just makes me feel a lot more comfortable to put that on there so that everyone knows. But a funny story on a side note, I can't tell you how many uh, restaurant receipts I've signed, you know, after one or two glasses of wine that I shouldn't have had, where I sign my name and it says notary public because I've been doing it for so long, or at the grocery store and I start to write notary public and they're like, are you notarizing the receipt? Um, <laughs> so it, 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 it can, you know, you, you get into habits, right? Um, Ms. Beth, I think this next question, and I, I love that we have three uh, hands raised. I want to kind of start alternating this next question is for you as well. Um, can we go ahead and give this one to you? Sure. Okay, so uh, Felicia asks, when returning, and, and I love this question because I actually don't know the answer. And this is case in point, 15 years into it, don't know the answer to this. When returning to correct a notarial certificate, do you count the corrections as additional notarial acts for the year, or do you let the original notarial act account for the original? Ah, so she's thinking taxes. She mm -hmm. ought to be thinking journal as well. So, so here's what I'm going to say. If you are in a state that allows you to correct a notarial certificate that you have already created, then it's still only one certificate. If you are in a state where you are not authorized to correct a certificate, but have to issue a new one, that's an additional certificate. So for the purposes of taxes, if you're counting notarial stamps, that's another notarial certificate. Um, but I'm also going to say that you need to, if it's only a correction, then you need to make note in your journal that you corrected a previously created certificate and what that correction was. If you're doing a new certificate, you should know it can, it takes a brand new journal line, right? For the date that you make the new certificate. So I think I'm on track with that question or that answer for you. If you're here, you can let me know if that's not what you were after. She is here tonight, um, but I don't think she's off to meet you. Um, but uh, if we want to check the chat to see for, for that, we have a, I, I want to get start getting some of these hands raised because I want to encourage everybody else to raise their hand because uh, we've got about 30 minutes left. We have uh, Sophia Kelly coming up, and I just want to thank Sophia Kelly for the 25 orders she's done for a month today. I looked it up really quick before. I see your name on my board. Um, even though I own Unlimited Inc., I don't technically run it anymore. Travis really runs it. But thank you for the 25 orders you've done with me so far this year, and we'd love to hear your questions. 
you got to unmute there. There you go. Hi, right, thank you for that. I didn't know how many it was, but I will tell you, thanks to this training, I'm just going to be honest. Thanks for this training. My signings are coming out great. When I get that approved drop, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, <yay. laughs> very happy. Thank you so much for this training. It means so much. Um, so I'm kind of going back to what we were talking about before on the notarization. So there ha there's some that says, I, Sophia Kelly, so I'm going to put comma, notary public, but after that, sometimes it'll say notary hereby. So when I, when it says that, am I still going to put comma notary public? Well, you're in Arizona. So if the certificate starts out I, and it wants the notary's name, unless it asks for the notary's name and title, you don't have to put it in the certificate. Okay. Arizona doesn't require that, but when you go down to your signature line, it should say notary public under that line. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, you should be putting it in your signature. Somewhere oh in that certificate, it has to show what your public office is. Okay, awesome. You answered my question because at the bottom, it always has notary public. And I will oh, write my name. Yeah. I'll write my name in yeah. next to it. So Okay. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks yeah. for being here, Sophia. All righty. Ms. Beth, we have a, a, a wrong question, and I want to get to this because I know uh, Mr. Bill is just itching to get to this question. <laughs> yep. And I actually want to answer it, too, because we, we've had a couple of these at Unlimited Inc. when they come up, and I know we have a lot of Ron notaries in here tonight. Um, Mr. Bill, are you ready for this question? Sure. <clears throat> I'm going to let you go and then I, I want to make my uh, piece on it as well. If you if you guys are brand new here tonight, Bill is our Ron instructor for Notary Stars. He's also a, a highly successful. He doesn't go out in the field and hasn't been out in two years. He really went out to a lot of uh, four years. Four years. Um, I haven't met somebody in four years. <laughs> he, he went out to a lot of conferences and, and really learned about Ron. I learned a lot from him. Uh, even owning a signing service, so he's a secret weapon. Um, so the question is, Bill, when correcting a certificate on a remote online notary session, can I just write in the correction and rescan it, or can I do it in Adobe? So do you mean correcting it before the signing or correcting it after the signing? After the signing. Okay, so after the signing, it, there's really nothing you can do to correct the actual certificate because everything, the, the best example when, that I try and give people, and it's probably the easiest one to understand, Ron, is when you're doing a remote notarization, think of it like laminating a piece of paper. As long as you, the paper doesn't have the laminate on it, you can write on it, you can do whatever you want. But as soon as you laminate it shut with that plastic, everything's locked in. So it doesn't matter what you do on top. You can't do anything on top of it because nothing will stick. And so because the document is encrypted, there's really no way to go in there and edit or change anything on the certificate because it's encrypted. There's it's it's a done deal. Could you un could you take the encryption off? Well, of course you can take it off, but then you've just destroyed the notarization. So the integrity of the notarization is gone. Now, I happen to be in a state that doesn't allow for corrections like that. I can't speak for every state. If there's like a correction where you can kind of append or add a corrective notarial certificate to it. But in my instance, there's really no choice but to do it over. So that's kind of, <laughs> you got to kind of watch for that because if you make a mistake, it, it can cost you because you have to pay for the session again. Um, so you want to kind of be sure that you're on top of that when possible. And you're going to make mistakes. I, I forgot a stamp the other day. I mean, I've done this for years and years and years and forgot my stamp. So, <laughs> I mean, there's things that like that that happen. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, right? Everybody can make a mistake. We just try to mitigate them for right. sure. <laughs> Another so, yeah, there's really technically no way to correct it uh, after the session's over. Yep. And guys, uh, I'm going to post this in the chat as well. 
Um, this next question is a Ron question, but I want to get to the hands that are raised as well. So I'm going to actually post the answer in the chat. Somebody had written in and said, you know, what's the best Ron platform to use? Uh, I'm posting it in the chat uh, right now. If you guys have not uh, are not members of Notary Stars, if you are members, we actually interview the Ron platforms that will come in and talk to us. And I have no shame in saying my least favorite one out there is Notarize. I don't think anybody should be doing notarizations for five dollars using a clicker. So clip it, send it to them. I don't care. Sue me. I don't like that. Um, but we bring in Ron platforms that you can use for your notary business. We interview them. And then we also click create Ron comparison sheets. So you can say, this one's valid in my state. This one is. And then compare the prices and what they offer you. Uh, I want to get through that question tonight because, you know, we only have about 30 minutes left. And I want to make sure you guys get that. Please keep checking the chat for any answers to questions or previous sessions that might answer your questions as well. Um, and don't forget to download it before the end of the, the session. Uh, Ms. Beth, can we go to Miss Yoki that's got her hand raised there? Hello. Um, so my question is about how to get to through signings quickly. And as I've been doing them, I've been learning. And by quickly, I mean <clears throat> specifically, I had a, um, a signing a couple of weeks ago, it was a refinance. So there's 164 pages and I swear almost, almost every other page had to be signed or filled in with so many different things. And this one was with a husband and a wife. And I know a large, I mean, most of this being as obscenely slow as it was had to do with um, the people not, uh, knowing what they should fill in. They have, well, one, the first issue was that they wanted to, though the wife particularly wanted to read over almost every, at least I would say she started giving up towards half of the packet, but she wanted to look through and just read everything. And I told them you're getting this in the, you know, you're getting a copy of this. You have the three-day right to cancel, all of it. She didn't care. She had some questions, uh, you know, she, she ended up calling the lender and asking. Um, but, you know, with her reading, you know, a lot of what was there combined with when it was time for her and her husband to sign or fill in, the signing wasn't that difficult, but the the filling in uh, part was Um so it was asking them a lot of personal information. They kept saying, I kept saying things like, oh, this is invasive. This is invasive asking me about my former marriages and this, that, the other. And then they would argue. And there was this one point where I was almost thought I was about to do something illegal because it just got really weird and crazy. But long story short, it ended up taking four hours. And by the time we we're done, I was like, I don't know how this is taking so long. We were all tired. That's when they started giving up reading everything. So and I told them, you know, like, I'm just a notary. I don't know the details of this. I'm just here to help facilitate the signing and make sure you're signing. So how does one in general try to make a situation like that or another situation go by faster? Ms. Beth, do you mind if I chime in on this first? I only have a couple of words and I'll throw that in at the end. You go for it. Okay. So... Um, and I want to make sure I'm pronouncing your name right. You can nod your head because you went on mute or I can unmute you there. Is it Yoki? I got it right. Okay, Miss Yoki. First of all, thank you for being here tonight. Um, speeding up signing is, is one thing that we all need to do. This is a really Alexa, good. stop. Um, it, it's going to be a part of your signing agent career. And if you don't mind me asking, what uh, what city are you in or what state are you in? Uh, I'm in California. Okay. So this is something I know something a lot about. In Arizona notaries who work for certain signing services are going to know about this. That beginning information about who were you married to, all of those things, those are called statements of information, okay? And generally, they're supposed to fill those out before you get to the signing. A lot of times, they have filled them out, and then they still want you to fill them out because they didn't fill them out correctly. Unfortunately, that's a part of our job as a signing service or, or a signing agent. Uh, a signing agent, we have to capture that information for them. It kind of sucks, to be honest. Titles should be on that. The lender should be on that before we get to the table, but they need that document. 
So if you see that document in your package, my protocol was to always start with that while I was filling out the IDs. I'm going to need you to fill out this information. Now, my last signing that took that long was in Los Angeles 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when the guy said, I'm an attorney, I'm going to have to read all this. I said, great. You call your title company and let them know that you are not prepared to sign today, like right now, <laughs> because I'm not going to sit here for four hours while you read 180 pages of small print font. As a signing agent, you know, you should be able to complete these within an hour, you know, if it's a large package, maybe an hour and a half. I haven't done a signing much more than an hour and 15 minutes in a long time, even 175 pages. If you find yourself and the signers are not willing to sign and they're that scared, you can't notarize the documents in the package. Okay, if they're arguing back and forth at the table, and I have actually told people this at the signing table, I am sorry, but if you are not prepared to sign these documents, you know, I can tell you what they are. I'm a third party. You know, I always start out every signing letting them know I'm a third party. I don't work for your title office or your lender. I'm here to administer the documents to you explain to you what the document means. I don't work for them. It doesn't make any difference for me if it closes or not. But when they start bickering back and forth and you, that's, that, that could be duress. That could be considered duress, right? Like you're, one party is making the other person sign under duress. At that point, you need to let them know, I can't continue with the signing if we're, if, and you only need to do it once, not twice, not three times, not four times over the signing. You say, Look, if you're not willing to sign the documents, you're going to need to call your lender. You're going to go talk, uh, call your title agency and then let me know. Make sure to call your assigning party immediately to let them know. Don't skip chains of command. They can call their title agency and their lender. You need to call your assigning party. That, that could be title in some instances, or it could be a signing service. Okay. Very rarely do we actually get hired by the lender, but that does happen. If you've been given contact information on your order, you call them and say, look, they're not ready to sign. Um, they're contacting their title and, and, and lender and let them know. And then if they aren't ready to come to a conclusion very quickly and let you administer those documents. But one thing you can't say is you have three days right to close. That's on the National Notary Association test. And that's one of the questions to say, we don't say. We don't say, well, you have three days to rescind on a refinance. And if it's a purchase or a sale, they can't have that three days, okay? So you got to be very careful about using that language. Um, you report it to the signing service that you're working for, but legally, you can't let them fight or one person bully the next person into providing information, okay? And when it comes to a notarized document, absolutely not shut it down. And then, Beth, I'd love to see what you wanted to put it on that. And also let me know if I if I'm in the right because just because I say it doesn't mean it's correct. Oh no, I hundred percent agree with everything that you've said. I would just want to remind everybody here that you, when you sit down at that table um, to facilitate a signing, you are supposed to be the facilitator. Okay. You're supposed to take gentle control of that signing. And there are certain um, psychological triggers that you can use to get persons to relax into the signing. She obviously didn't trust anything that was going on. She wanted to read every word off of the documents. And listen, if they want to do that, they have the full right and authority to do so. But here's the rub, if you can take general control of that signing and you are controlling what's happening at the table and you are helping your signers relax into the process, if they know exactly what to expect when you sit down at that table, then uh, it's all gonna go very much smoother. Uh, I guarantee you. That takes practice, Yoki. Um, so it's not just getting in there and doing business, it's getting in there and making them feel comfortable about doing the business. And that takes some practice. That's all I wanted to add. Thank you, Ms. Beth. I, I actually uh, messaged uh, Yoki and just wanted to let you know that was a great question because I'm sure that's on a lot of signing agents' minds. Yeah.
Um, Ms. Beth, do you mind if we take care of some of the hands up? I know we have a lot of questions on the job form, but I really appreciate no. it. I yeah, appreciate, let's. I appreciate the people who are brave enough to talk on camera, so I want to make sure we don't discount them as well. Absolutely. You want Angela up next? Yes, ma'am. Hello, Miss Angela. Go ahead and unmute and ask your question. So I had a question last week, but I have a new question. So I don't know how many questions I'm allowed to ask. Unlimited. But... <laughs> <laughs> so briefly, I, I had a general notary call for someone who is paraplegic and they signed by blinking. So I was super like, whoa, I, I asked a couple of questions and I said I would have to call the NNA and find out how we get that signature on paper and like in my journal. So she got grumpy and said, okay, um, I'll call you back later. And I never did. And I didn't expect her to, but I was like, have you any, has anyone heard of that before? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> yeah. Some paraplegics who can't move their hands, arms, legs, um, maybe even can't speak, but they can blink. That's not going to hand, that's not going to stand up in court. You cannot guarantee that someone didn't blink um, um, on purpose, like it was a reflex, right? We blink a gazillion times a day. Do we ever know we do that? Can we force ourselves to blink? Absolutely. Do we know when we just instinctively blink for whatever reason? Probably not. That's the why it will never hold up in court that they are agreeing to something by blinking so you can't use it so then and as a notary do yeah. i just say i need to excuse myself from that or do, where do i refer them to an attorney or I mean, so if i was in that situation angela i would look at whoever hired me because it obviously isn't the paraplegic person right ask them do you have power of attorney for this person if they say no, then they need to hire an attorney and get a power of attorney issued so that someone can make these decisions for them and sign their name on documents, legal documents concerning their finances and their property and their health, their medical health care. So they, you would not be able to facilitate that signing at all. Okay. Honey, you don't have any way around that, do you? No, but I want to talk about the marketing side of this, okay? Um, <laughs> you can make partnerships with attorneys before these things come up, okay? Uh, for estate oh. planning, for personal injury, for power of attorney. Go out and make your partnerships with, notar uh, with attorneys and say, listen, when I run into these situations, I'm going to refer business to you and say, hey, here's a great attorney down the street. I can't do this. Um, and then ask them, you know, when you need a mobile notary, can you do the same for me? They're probably going to need you more than you'll need them, but they'll appreciate that business. And, you know, I have a slew of attorneys that I work with. And when people call me and it goes out of my scope of business, I can say, I can point you in the right direction. Call this law firm. If they can't help you, they'll tell you where to go and make sure that that attorney is not just, you know, we all know how to interview someone, or at least I hope we do. Um, to make sure that you can refer them, but, you know, kick the can down the road to the right place and then make sure that place will kick a can back to you every now and then. Yeah, so that attorney is likely going to have to petition the court for conservatorship or guardianship on this person um, in order to get that done. So it's not going to be something they're going to call you back right away either and say, okay, we're ready to go, right? It's going to take a little bit, so... Good question, though. Thanks, Angela. Um, Sandra, Sandra Phillips, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Hi. Good evening, everyone. Uh, good to see you again, Beth. <laughs> yeah, you too. Um, just kind of piggyback off of the um, certificate. My signature that I used when I signed my commission is a is a scribble. So in that particular case, should I on my certificates after my scribble uh, print my name, even though it's on my stamp? 
Um, not necessarily. Okay. You're in California. California does not require you to print your name. Florida does. Okay. okay. Um, so if that's the way you signed your bond, your commission, mm -hmm. then that's absolutely the way you need to sign your certificates for every notarial act. Um, when, you know, there are times when they are looking to verify that Sandra Phillips is signing this certificate and that she's currently um, a notary in good standing. And that happens every day with apostilles, right? They're going to look at your signature, make sure it matches the name on your on your bond or on your commission. They're going to make sure your commission is still in force, all of those things. So yes, you can just scribble your name, however it is on your um, thing. You don't need to print it below. Okay, thank you. You bet. I'm going to say, though, I do it just as a matter of course, but <laughs> for a different reason. Okay? All righty. Mr. Ronnie, we want to continue with hands up. Uh, yes, let's continue with hands up because I, I want to make sure to reward the people that, you know, and no offense to people who write in. I mean, we'll, we will definitely get to those, but it takes a lot of courage to raise your hand and ask questions in front of everyone. So I, I definitely want to keep going with the hands raised so we can make sure we get those. And then Maritza. before we go with Maritza, Angela, are we done? Are you done or did you have another question to get back in the queue? Okay, she got another question. No problem. Okay. Maritza, go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Hello, everyone. And uh, Ronnie, it was great talking to you the other day. Um, I don't remember. Do you remember speaking with me? I do. Okay. Uh, so I got in touch with, well, I was notified by email on a couple of uh, um, signing agencies that they either don't rate notaries or they, if they'll rate them if they have time. That is absolutely, I don't want to cut you off, but that is absolutely bull crap. I know what the word you want to use in your yeah, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely bull crap. So if signing services won't take the time to rate you after you work with them and put me to the test at this, and I'll make sure that my team knows about this tomorrow. When you close an order and you ask for a rating and you know you did a good job. Now, if you get a notary error, don't do it. But Miss Marie, yeah. if they tell you that, consider working with them again and when they need a notary. That is to me, is the rudest thing ever, um, you know, to not rate someone who asked for it. And this is why all of you should be asking at the signing table to rate me on Google Business Yelp, because if the signing service won't. But honestly, you should go into Notary Stars on the membership, because I know you just signed up for the higher level membership. Rate those companies in Notary Stars. And if we don't have them, put them there and let them know what your experience is, because Absolutely. If you work for someone and you ask for a review on your work, if you didn't do anything wrong, which I know you didn't because I've seen your profile, they should at least take five minutes to go and say, this person did, because how long did you work for them? It takes two minutes to write, good job, great yeah. number, two, two minutes or less. Okay. And you spend sometimes an hour to two hours to three hours on their assignments. If they can't do that for you, Maybe consider working for them in the future or slowly raising your prices. At Unlimited Inc., if you write us and you work for us, you, now we're not going to do it on every single order. We will do it once a month. And I've been that way from the beginning. When we cut a paycheck, we always say, this notary did good from this paycheck to this paycheck. But if, if, so, if, if we get good feedback from title, we take that time. We notify the notary. We put it on their profile. But if they told you we don't rate notaries, then what the H-E double hockey sticks, and I hope somebody clips this and sends it to all the sign services that say this, what the H-E double hockey sticks do you even pay for a notary management platform for that in, in, incorporates that? And she's a well-known notary uh, sign agency. Don't name her on here, but let me know. I'm not going to. I will definitely <laughs> add that to the notary platforms on Notary Stars because seriously... Like you, you know, and I know how many orders you've done because I can see them in signing order. So if you don't take time to to write a review for somebody who's done nothing wrong, 
and everything right, which I, I actually know Ms. Maritza's profile because we talked in length this week, right? Um, and, and I don't want to get into that, but, you know, Ms. Maritza was on her way out the door from Notary Stars because I don't think she really understood what we stood for here. And we talked in great length and I gave her some advice about this and uh, made, helped her understand how Unlimited Inc. assigns notaries. And I said, well, ask some of those companies. For somebody to tell you no after you've done a good job for them, because you know what? If you'd done a bad job, Miss Maritza, you know what they would have done? They would have put negative feedback on you. Yeah, I was totally pissed. Sorry. No, th that's okay. We <laughs> can put that out. Like, I I'm not happy about it either. So what's done is done. Oh, well. Yeah. If you, in, in, and somebody said, I clipped it in the chat. I, I'm going to make an Instagram about this as well. Like, I, I'm i sorry that that's happening to you, but uh, your first file of Unlimited Inc., you call me personally, I'll make sure I put great feedback on there for you. Thank you. We'll, we'll show them. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's actually a really great question. And I'm glad everybody that all the 120 people that's on the call to hear that. Um, Miss Beth, for Cynthia, are you ready? Ready, Cynthia. Go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm not being anti-active um, or uh, visual, but I'm I'm a little uh, technology challenged when it comes to putting my photo on there. <laughs> so oh. <laughs> anyway, I am asking um, about general notary work. I hope I'm not uh, off topic, but I have a prenuptial signing later on this week and the attorney has asked for two witnesses now i normally charge you know the ten dollars per stamp plus travel but if i'm one of the um witnesses should i charge for that other witness fee or should i you know i mean would that be unethical well first of all if you're providing a witness absolutely charge for it Yes, I am. Um, and can you tell me what state you're in? Florida. Okay. Florida does allow you to be one of the witnesses, but now you ventured out of real estate. That's where our laws right. are for real estate that says the notary can also be the witness. And you're into family law now. Uh -huh. Those rules and regulations might be different. So you might not be able to be the notary and the witness. Oftentimes in uh, probate or family law, those regulations change based on the government entity that um, creates those rules. So um, first of all, I'm going to say it's never a good idea. And NNA will tell you it's never a good idea to be the notary and the witness. On and the, the witness, document. right. Right. So... Mm -hmm. Um, with that in mind, if you are being required by this attorney to bring witnesses, is he exactly to bring two? Can you be one of the witnesses? You can ask him if you're willing to do that. Me, I always kind of come back with the knee jerk reaction. Um, it's company policy, my company policy that I not be one of the witnesses on a document that I notarize. So we're gonna need two witnesses and I need $30 a piece for those two witnesses and find somebody to bring them with me. I, okay. I don't ever bring witnesses. I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like the coordination of that and being held responsible when those witnesses don't show up on time, right? So I'd rather exactly. not deal with that. I always kind of put that back on the signer. So that's up to you how you want to do it. But it is not unethical to charge when uh, you're providing a witness, for sure. And it, so I wouldn't, if I wind up being the, the second witness, don't charge the fee? No, you wouldn't charge it for yourself. You're already right. being paid to do a service. That's I'm already there. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You wouldn't charge. Exactly. Money. Okay. Mm, righty. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> you bet. Did that kind of hone in 
to your car yes. there? Yes, it did, because I did uh, let the signer know that um, to ask the attorney if I could be one of the witnesses, because I knew it wasn't real estate. I knew it was family law, but I wanted to know what the attorney had to say about it. So, okay. um, so that answer from them is forthcoming, but you, you cleared it up. Okay. All righty. Perfect. Okay, All righty. Okay. We've only got about eight minutes left, guys. So let's see how many of these hands that are currently up in the air we can get uh, questions answered for. Beth McGee, go ahead. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I am. Thank you. And thanks for confirming my hybrid certificate last week on Facebook. When I asked that question, I was so excited that I recognized it. So huh? um, I, I have a question about, um, uh, I get several signings where uh, attorneys will be representing someone in a, like an accident claim or something. And they will need to have uh, records authorization, uh, affidavit regarding like insurance and treatment, and they'll send the forms with tons of blanks in them. And you sit at the table and the person doesn't really know how to fill that information out and what goes where. Um, I can't represent, I can't represent the attorney's office. I can't give them advice about what goes where necessarily. Um, and I, I guess I, tr I sit there and I try to make them fill out as much as we possibly can fill out. Um, but I don't really feel comfortable having, because they're going to use these forms probably for several different, uh, billing agencies or medical practices that have done, um, who have billed this client. Right. And, I don't want it to be perceived that they can go ahead and just make copies of this and put a different healthcare provider in a line, you know, each time and then just send a copy with my notarization on it. Do you, do you, does that, am I making sense? So mm -hmm. like they're, yes. they want, they want you to like leave the blank of who you're requesting these healthcare records for blank. What do, what do we do in that instance? Should they be sending a form for each one? Uh, I, I guess I, you know. Well, if you're notarizing these, they, they typically contain um, uh, an acknowledgement, not a giraffe, right? Uh, no, because an affidavit is going to be a giraffe. Or for you, it's going to be a hybrid certificate. <laughs> right, right. No, so I'm very careful about that. <laughs> so they're just giving permission for this attorney firm to um, access their medical records at this provider. Um, so an and affidavit's kind of an incorrect term for that because all they're doing is giving permission. They're not verifying information if the document reads that they're verifying that they um had been to that facility then yeah it has to be filled out for mm -hmm. sure in a jury beth uh we have to give them an oath so yeah. if there's any blanks in the document they can't swear to the contents of the document if the information is blank right so yeah you got a problem with that yeah, I mean, I just feel like uh, I'm giving them a hard time because they have this expectation that they're going to have something that's like a boilerplate that they can submit to. However, and I'm just not willing to do that you know, with my notarization. So if it were an acknowledgement, it probably wouldn't be a huge deal. Mm -hmm. um, a giraffe, the only time we can have a blank line in a giraffe is when the information is not yet known. So mm -hmm. that would be something like a recording number, something that doesn't happen until after the document leaves your hands, right? Mm -hmm. Any mm -hmm. recorder's, uh, recorder's number, uh, something like that. But when we're, uh, they're doing, they're trying to do a shotgun or a blanket um, and they want you to sign, have them sign 15 of these, you know, or take one and, mm -hmm. fill it and cop photocopy it and use it 15 times. Yeah, we we really can't do that. Yeah, That's, I don't I wouldn't I'm not comfortable with that. I just wanted to make sure that being a stickler about it isn't just 
being a, a pain. <laughs> you know? Well, I know we get kind of intimidated, particularly when something comes from an attorney's office, but they're accident attorneys. They don't necessarily know notarial law. Right. So stay okay. your ground for sure. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All righty. And Cookie. Cookie's here. Hi, Cookie. Go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Hi, guys. Um, this is for Ronnie, maybe, um, as That's a signing service. So I was on a signing, and this, and it goes back to Yoki, like being on the job for four hours. So the signing services always say like two to three hours for the scam backs. But when I got to this job, it was at the house that they were buying and the wife kept taking off. The realtor was there. They're looking at the house. Now I'm like, I bring my mobile scanner so I could scan back. Even though the job's only 15 minutes from my house, I still bring my scanner. The wife's taken off. I'm two and a half hours into this now. And they're starting to get antsy because they have a truck coming. They're going to start moving in. And I got really nervous. Then I missed some stamps because they were making me anxious. How important is it for those scan backs to be put in within that time limit? Like, is this something I should have contacted the signing service for? Like, these are going to get back later. Like, that's that whole time frame is like really making me anxious. I, I love this question because I can think back to many times when this happened to me until the day I decided it would not happen again. And, <laughs> I, you know, and and I, I love this question. And I think that all notaries should know this because whether you've been doing it for five years or a year, um, there will be a day where you decide this is not going to happen again. And my last time was a little kid playing Nintendo and the dad kid kept getting up from the table and I noticed he was missing things and I was missing things because it's distracting. And I've had people going, you know, working with Open Door where people are constantly moving out of houses and into houses, I call it musical houses. <laughs> I had to learn to just say, listen, I'm here to do this transaction. I'm going to need you for... 45 minutes to one hour. If this is not a good time for you, if, if, if they tell you, you know, we're going to be moving in and all those things, you can capture that before you go and say, well, I'm going to need your full attention. If the realtor's there, they are no longer a part of that transaction. And you can politely say to them, listen, I'm going to need their attention because we got to sign this right so that it can close, right? They, they're, they're here with a moving truck. They, they have to do this. Um, you can politely tell them that. And I mean, ever so politely because realtors they're that's their client right you don't want to take them away from their client but you can politely tell them listen i'm here to do my piece of the transaction um i need to get their attention for 45 minutes i'm going to make this as painless and quick as possible and then you have to tell them i understand you have a whole world swirling around you right now but i need your attention for 45 minutes so that we can do this and then you can run around and if there's anything wrong while i double check i'll come get you but you get it done. And yes, if they won't do that after that, you need to contact the assigning party and say, listen, they're not sitting still so I can sign these and they'll let you know how to proceed from there. But you need to be able to take control of your table or your signing experience when you walk through the door. And, and sometimes it's telling the realtor, look, I know that you're here to protect your client. I need to do my part now. Let me get through these documents and we can chit chat after, not before. Um, here's the settlement statement in the CD while I'm going through the, you know, ID purposes, if they want to look at it. But when I start my part of the job, I'm going to need you to remain silent so I can get this done. And if they don't want to sit down, you actually can't do the transaction. You're not, you're not there to chase people around the table. And that's what happened. I never got to double check my work. And so by the time I got home and I caught it, um, yeah. And then the signing service caught it. I caught one thing before I scanned it in, then really put me behind because I called them real quick and ran back to the house, got them to sign it. But now the scan backs are really getting back late. So yeah, I get some, I mean. Communication is going to be key for you. 
can we put four hours? You know, because four that? hours four hours can mean the difference between funding and not funding. So true. <laughs> you have to learn to be confident to take control of the situation. And yeah. as soon as you see it, you should be able to walk in the door and say, we need to set up a station. And I, I, you know, I remember that day when I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm not getting blamed for this. They knew mm -hmm. they were buying a house. They knew that they, I'm sure someone told them there's going to be a lot of paperwork. You know, we live in a world where everyone in this world thinks that they're special now. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Special too. I just called Walmart and gave them an airfield, air pool because I didn't get it. But half of my groceries on Super Bowl Sunday, you know, but we have to take control of our situation. And it, it, the minute it gets out of control, we have to let the signing party know. And then it's really on them to call that client and say, you're not listening to my agent at the moment. And if they don't do that for you, there's nothing you can do. It's not on you at that point. If they don't wind up funding because they didn't listen to you, it's not your fault. You reported it. You let them know. You were polite about it. Always be polite. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't mean it. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> All righty. One last hand still sitting in the sky over here. Dee Dee, would you like to unmute and ask your question? I um, don't have a question, and I know time is limited. I wanted to let somebody know about renewing their tenant commission, if time permits. Okay. Is that right? So thank you so much for allowing me the time. So yeah. for everyone is renewing, this is what happened to me. This is my first time renewing. My commission expired January 3rd. Worked with an NNA um, to put together a package based on my needs. They entered the order the day after January 4th. Pushed my bond out to February, 30 days to February 3rd. Then I spoke to them and we worked out. They refunded my money. And I said, are you sure this is going to keep me with this package? Don't, no problem. So they refunded my money. I got the bond dated February 3rd, took it to my, my county clerk, filed it. That same day in my mail, my bond was canceled. So it took about a week and then they reinstated me. But now, based on all the scenarios, my secretary state is now just starting December renewals. So looking, I'm looking at probably April getting my commission renewed. So I just want to let everybody know, start working on renewing your commissions at least six weeks ahead of time. Yeah, for any it state, was, for sure. Any yeah. state, any state. It was just, I was just flabbergasted that this has happened. But on the upside... I am doing, um, working on all my profiles, thanks to Ronnie and you and everybody, and I'm getting all my, uh, everything worked on and up to date, getting uh, up to date on my trainings. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And give you some time to, to think through it and work through it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, well, so that was, that was my little scenario there. And thank you. Ms. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate that as well. Miss Beth, um, I think we need to close out for tonight, but I want to ask everybody for to stick around after our little wave because I have two important announcements or one thing to ask of you guys and one thing to announce that I just think is so cool. Um, if you are not naked right now or nobody in the house is naked, turn on those cameras for just a moment and let's wave to those notaries who were not able to make it tonight because you know they're going to watch it on YouTube tomorrow. We have a lot of notaries to watch it on replay. Let's give our signature wave. Wave to yourself if you come back and watch something and learn it again tomorrow because sometimes people need to watch things twice and hear it again. Wave to those future notaries who are finding us on YouTube as we speak who are going to dedicate themselves to signing agent excellence. And Miss Beth, how do we really say it here at Notary Stars? Well, guys, just remember, and I know you've heard this before, but we are all in the same storm, right? We're just not all in the same boat. Some have yachts, some have canoes, some of us are dog paddling. Just remember to reach back and grab the hand of that notary next to you or behind you and show them the way. Take them on that journey with you. Good night, guys. Have a good evening. <laughs>